Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant, CCIE12933 here, and in today's CCNP Switch video practice exam, we're going to take on the Hot Standby Routing Protocol, HSRP, and this is definitely just exam number one in the series, and I also have some video tutorials on the YouTube channel and the Bulldog blog as well. And for those of you who embed my videos in your websites, thank you for that. We'll also be seeing you there, because HSRP and all of the other router redundancy protocols, they're big topics on the CCNP Switch exam exam of course but you're also going to run into them throughout your career router redundancy and of course multi-layer switch redundancy in this case is so very important today we've got to know these protocols inside and out now here's a question not directly related to HSRP but we got to know it to get our config started on a multi-layer Cisco switch what interface level command enables the L3 capabilities of a switch port and I'm going to go ahead and go through the questions quickly so we have time for discussion at the end. So if you need a few extra seconds, just pause the video. If you want your local HSRP router, the one you're configuring, to take over as the active router in your HSRP group, which of these four things would the local router need? Would it need a higher priority than the active router, a lower priority, the preempt option, and or would we need to reload the current active router? Now that you successfully configured a multi-layer switch port as a routed port, what interface level command would take it back to strictly being a switch port? Strictly being an L2 port. And then finally, we're introduced to several interface types that you may not be familiar with in your CCNP switch studies, but you will be when we're done with them. SVIs, switch virtual interfaces, routed ports, and layer 3 ether channels. Which of these can legally be placed into an HSRP group? Or is it all of them or is it none of them? Let's go back and tackle these questions. On a multi-layer Cisco switch, all the ports are going to be running at L2 mode by default. If you want to make it a routed port, the first thing you've got to do is enter the no switch port command. No switch port. That will give it L3 capabilities. Now as for this HSRP question about taking over as the active router, I'm going to have a tutorial here on the YouTube channel very shortly on this very topic because it does tend to trip people up. First off, we have to get the higher versus lower straight because as we know at this point in our study, sometimes the higher value is better and sometimes the lower value is better. Well in this case, the higher priority will roll. So we need to give it a higher priority than the active router. Do you remember what the default is? what the HSRP default is for priority, it's 100. So it's going to have to be higher than 100 assuming the active is still at the default. Now, we've got to have the preempt option on the local router. You've got to. Otherwise, you could configure with a priority of 200, stick it in the network, joins the group the whole bit, but it will not take over as the active router. So you've got to have a higher priority than the active router, and you've got to have the preempt option. Reloading the active router doesn't do any good, and you don't need to do it anyway. If you have configured a multi-layer switch port as a routed port with the no switch port command, it does stand to reason that if you then put in switch port as one word, that will make it a switch port again. It's a layer two, it's a layer two port at that point. So it's just no switch port for layer three and then switch port for layer two. And then finally, boy, we spend a lot of time with these three interfaces in the CCNP switch course. We've got switch virtual interfaces, routed ports, and L3 ether channels, and we've got to know which ones are legal to put in the HSRP group. In this case, all three of these interfaces are legal to be placed into an HSRP group. So thanks for taking this video practice exam. Like I said, we've got plenty of additional material, video exams, tutorials, and some other surprises coming up at the Bryant Advantage website and here on the YouTube channel. Thanks again for taking this exam. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE12933.